This is Pastor Mark Davis. And we greet you with Jesus Joy. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. We are continuing with our incredible series, Marriage God's Way. And uh, it's been a blessing. I don't know if you've been tuning in each week, but if you haven't, you've been missing a treat. Um, I feel like last week was really wonderful on uh, communication. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I don't know why he's playing games tonight, but anyway, I'm gonna turn it over to you if you want to give a summary or talk about last week a little bit, and um, and then you can just open us up in prayer. Yeah, I mean, of course, we're continuing the series. We're talking about the three C's, you know, and tonight will be on commitment. You know, we we talked about compromise and you know so forth. Covenant was the first one, and we kind of kind of laid the foundation of that. Marriage is really a covenant and not a contract, right? Because some people look at marriage as a contract, right? Mm -hmm. And if you mess up, I'm out of here, right? Because we have a contract and you, you violate the contract. But, you know, we as Christians, we have a covenant. And we, that's why we go in front of a, a preacher and we, you know, make a vow. And the vow is based on, you know, God principle. We talk about a triangle and we get into that a little bit today. How, you know, marriage is like a triangle, right? We have the wife at one base and the husband at another base and God is at apex. As we get closer towards God, we get closer to each other. And that's kind of the whole idea about a, a marriage relationship that's God's way. And so tonight we're going to get into some commitments. I mean, some commitments that we should make to each other. Yes, and that if we make those commitments and stand by them, we'll find that our relationships will be a whole lot better than some challenges. Because if we don't make certain commitments... There's, we leave room for errors. We leave room for the enemy. We leave room for other people to, to, to get into our relations and mess it up. But if we make some firm commitment to each other, as we're going to share with you tonight, I guarantee you, your marriage, your relationship will be a whole lot better because of it. And so we're going to jump into prayer. And if you do us a favor and please share, 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 whatever platform that you're watching us on, I guarantee you that the person that you share it with will be glad that you did because I believe it will bless you, it will encourage you, it will challenge you also, but I believe you'll love the lesson tonight on commitment. So let's pray and then we'll jump right into the lesson. Amen? Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity, oh God, to teach this word. We thank you for the privilege, oh God, to come and to share, oh God, about commitment, oh God, as it relates to marriage, as it relates to husband and wife relationships, oh God. I pray that something will be said tonight, oh God, to encourage somebody, challenge somebody, maybe going through a rough time, oh God, and their commitment to each other is not what it's supposed to be, or it's, it's weighed over the years, oh God, because of life, oh God. I pray something will be said tonight, oh God, to reignite that fire, that yes. trust, that belief, oh God, yes. in their marriage, in their relationship, oh God. I pray you anoint your servants, oh God, to teach his lesson with simplicity, yes. yet power and conviction, O oh God. Yes. So I pray for each and every person, O oh God, that's listened to this broadcast, whether yes. live or the rebroadcast, O oh God. Yes. There'll be laser focus, O oh God, and something will be said, O oh God, on their situation, O oh God, yes. that will encourage them. Yes. We thank you, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Well, I'm excited that you're excited, honey. So as you said, we're talking about um, commitments, and in, and in particular, it's called five specific commitments to help us stay on course in a marriage that is thriving not just surviving and I think that's important you don't want to just survive you don't want to just go through well we made it we've been married 20 years we made it we married 30 years no you want to make sure it's a thriving relationship and I believe you know as we've uh, already you know talked about some of these things or shared that um, this will actually help the person that may be needing to reach up and tie a new knot you know needing to recommit uh, this is a great place to start so um, I'll read off the first one and then you can mm -hmm. kind of take it from there I know you have some things you want to share pertaining to it but the first one if you're taking notes 
notes. And if you just joined, this is Pastors Mark and Tracy Davis, Abundant Life Christian Center Church. This is our cyber Bible study. We come every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. to share with you. And we're hoping that you'll uh, not only um, watch tonight, but make it a part of your weekly schedule to tune in uh, to catch us every week. So the first one is we are teammates not opponents. Right. So we'll make a commitment to be teammates, not components. I'll read just a little bit here. Married people must look beyond the me to the we. Marriage is based on togetherness and companionship. Teammates watch out for each for one another. They take each other's backs. Whether they come from without or within, we must guard against forces that threaten our unity, mm -hmm. even our children. Mm -hmm. So you want to uh, basically make that commitment that I'm your teammate I'm not competing with you and I think this is important because I've seen it where couples compete with each other so we mentioned children but it can be um, you know the children trying to come in between the parents <laughs> uh, in our case we have to be teammates with we were teammates pertaining to raising the children but also in ministry and so we want to talk about those two aspects you know there's some couples that maybe even work together you know, and um, so you want to make sure that um, when you're looking at that, that you value one another's gifts, what they bring to the table, as opposed to competing with one another. You learn to complement one another. You learn to, you know, I know you were really into sports. I never was, <laughs> um, but you re and even now you're into sports. And the thing that I admire most about, you know, sports is the the concept of team, mm -hmm. having one another's back. Anything on that, babe? No, that's so important because. I think one thing you said right there is that we're not enemies. All right, not enemies. I know people mm -hmm. say, point, but we're not enemies, right? Mm -hmm. She's not my enemy. I'm not her enemy. We're on the same team, okay? Absolutely. And I know we. I watch a lot of March Madness going on right now, and I saw an incident yesterday. Just kind of remind me of what we're saying here. Two teammates were getting at each other, and everybody just quick grab, grab, grab them real quick. Like, no, no, that's your teammate. Mm -hmm. But somewhere, one of them might push, shove one of them for something, and they're like, no, cut it out. Because we're at a critical junction in the game right now. And we can't fight against each other and expect to win. Mm -hmm. Well, the same way in marriage. If we want to win this this life of marriage, you know, we got to make sure we're on the same team and we act like we're on the same team, right? Not even not, act like. You know, not say act. I mean, don't, don't secretly sabotage your teammate, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> because, you know, you, you're, being, you're competing with a teammate. We've seen that. People are jealous of their, you know. He makes more than me, or she makes more than me, mm -hmm. or she got more notoriety, or you know, uh, uh, people are paying more attention, mm -hmm. or they're, they're they're supporting her stuff more than my stuff. No, that's the enemy. Mm -hmm. The enemy mm -hmm. wants to get into there and try and divide you, mm -hmm. divide your marriage, your relationship, mm -hmm. and so we gotta make a commitment that that's not gonna happen because we are on the same team. Amen. God placed us together, and now we are one. That's why I love what the Bible said, right? We we'll leave father and mother. And we're united, stick like glue. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter two, verse eighteen says, "We stick like glue, mm -hmm. super glue." I always say because now we're 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 one. Mm -hmm. And so when I used to tell people, if you offend my wife, you really offend me, and vice versa, right? Yeah. Because we're one, and you can't just attack one of us and it doesn't affect both of us, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you start thinking as just we're one, we're one, and we're not competing, we're not trying to to put each other down, then it becomes uh, important because. You said something in there that I wanted to pull out real quick. It says, okay. guard against forces that threaten your unity. Mm -hmm. And if we talk about somebody, kids to try to divide you, right? Mm -hmm. And the so mom said I could do it. Dad says I could do it. You know, that's what they're trying to do is put that divide that unity. Well, it's not just the kids. People from the outside does that, you know? Yeah. And you got to be careful that you don't allow anybody mm -hmm. to, to to come against you where you're fighting. First thing I would tell folks, I, I, if you took, so my wife said something or did something, I'll believe my wife first. We're going to have a conversation because I'm not going to believe something you're saying about my spouse. No. You know, if there's some issues, we're going we to have a talk about it. Yeah. And so you got to be careful that you allow other people to come in there and try to divide you. Mm -hmm. uh, even our children should respect the priority of our relationship and learn to value it. Mm -hmm. And so that's an example. The kids need to see unity. You know, yes. they need to see that, no, no, I got I got dad's back. <laughs> or, no, I got mom's back. They need to see that. Yeah. Um, ask yourself the hard question. So this is all of us that are recommitting ourselves to our spouse. Mm -hmm. I, I believe you need to do that. I, I believe that this is something that we need to consciously do. Mm -hmm. Recommit. Like, I recommit to you. So these are some questions to ask. Am I too proud or too selfish to be a good teammate? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have to reevaluate ourselves and say, am I playing my part? Am I playing team? 
you know, as opposed to expecting another person to do it. Am I too critical? Mm. Sometimes we can be very, very critical of our of our spouse. You know, whether it's how they take care of the home. You know how they, um, and I can just speak from a woman's standpoint. You know you, the meals you prepare. You know were you uh, available for a particular uh, uh, event or whatever it is. You know are you just critical? I don't like how you wear your hair. You wear too much makeup. Mm -hmm. um, your clothes are too loose, too tight. Whatever, whatever. You know are you criticizing your spouse? You know um, are you you know saying things against your husband like you know so and so uh, would never talk to his wife like that. You know doing those types of things, criticizing his efforts. You know. Uh, Am I open to correction? Right so when you're saying, yeah, yeah right I mean, open to correction. Yeah. Like, can your spouse correct you? Not in public, not demeaning, you know, not trying to embarrass them. But if you see something that they're in error, you know, or if they see something where you're in error, are you open to being corrected? That's what teammate does. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I love sports. And that illustration there, sports exemplify that than anything else. Mm -hmm. If a person on the team is not playing the proper defense, they got out of alignment, the teammate's going to say, hey man, no, no, you're supposed to be over there. Mm -hmm. And you got to be open to that. But what do you mean? I, I've been playing basketball all my life. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just got, you got confused in the last sequence and you weren't in the right position. Mm -hmm. And that's in any sport, soccer, you know, you know football. Mm -hmm. Well, in the, in, in, the, in the marriage life, sometimes we don't, do the right thing, say the right thing, mm -hmm. or, or act the right way. Mm -hmm. And so this, you, you got to be open for your spouse and say, you know what, when you said that the other day, it really hurt my feelings, and mm -hmm. I think you could have said it differently, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you, but, but if you're defensive immediately, mm -hmm. I mean, what you mean? I didn't say it any kind of way. Mm -hmm. See, that's that division. That's that, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're like we're enemies. No, I'm just pointing something out to you that affected me, mm -hmm. that, that maybe, so we don't have to deal with it in the future. Mm -hmm. And so that open communication to me is critical mm -hmm. in showing that we are the same team. In, in tying with that, um, say for an example, there was an incident where you may have been harsh with, with one of the children, or I've been too harsh. Mm -hmm. We're talking about co correction like that, so I wouldn't correct you in front of the kid, right, right? Right. But privately, honey, I felt like you were a little harsh. I felt like you know you you weren't. And you've listening. done that in, in in our marriage, right? And I appreciated it, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I didn't bring it up to you know give any. Practice. No, no, I just want you because I, I recall some of the time because I'm a man. Sometimes you know I I'm a little bit tough mm -hmm. on when the kids. And again, I don't realize sometimes my voice has been raised and mm -hmm. the tone is a little bit more than it should be, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially with our girls, for example, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that, that's a real kind of situation. That's why I wanted to point it out. Mm -hmm. Because all of us are human, right? Absolutely. And we don't always do the right things and say the right things. But if we're, if we're open to co corrections we're and our spouse says, you know, hey, what about, you know, in just, just in the future, right? Mm -hmm. just, if you could just make sure that you pay attention to that, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. on, on, on my side, I remember, uh, I don't even know if this is still a problem, but it was definitely a problem where whenever I would go grocery shopping, you would tell me what the budget was, but I would go over it. I just wasn't, Always. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't conscious of it as I should have been. stuff, put in the car. Right. But I mean, you weren't Special there. Stuff. You weren't there. Look, can I finish my story, please? But it's amazing <laughs> because you had to correct me. You know, you were like, you know what, we're on the same team and we have some goals and, you know, and this is what we're doing. And so... I didn't like the word budget, you know, because to me that sounds like lack. That sounds like, yeah, I didn't like that. You know what I mean? So I feel like even something like that, I want to give an example of, you know, from the standpoint of if you're a team, you need to be in agreement. And so if that's a budget, if that's how you're engaging with one another, how you're raising the children, you have to be a team. And so those are some things that have to be talked about. Um, let's see. Does my tendency to be argumentative hurt team unity? Mm. Argumentative. <laughs> you like to call it debate, <laughs> right? It's a healthy discussion. debate. Discussion. A discussion. <laughs> I don't like to argue because my, my temper will be like gone. It's like I made my point. I'm good. But you want to keep going, you know. And so we do have to um, evaluate that. And I like that we're being transparent so that we can help somebody because mm -hmm. some people, that's their personality. They like to debate. They like to argue. They have to be right. But if you want to be um, recommitting and, and, and having a, a marriage that's an example to the world, right, Christ in the church, then you have to commit to saying, you know what, I got to make sure that there is no I in team, mm -hmm. right? There's no I. It's, it's about us. It's about mm -hmm. we as opposed to what you, you being right all the time. So the, the bottom line before we move to the next one is the potential changes in marriage and family require flexibility 
and willingness to make adjustments. So we have to be flexible and we have to make the adjustments when they are necessary because we're working together because in essence we're on the same team. And Amen. I think that's the biggest thing. We are on the same, same team. team. Somebody put that in the comments. Yeah. Same team. Same team. Very important. All right, you ready to move to the next one? Yeah. All right, the second one is we will value and respect each other. Mm. Okay, mm. I commit to value you mm. and respect you. Okay, that's what you mm. want to uh, let your spouse know that you value them and that you respect them. So, um, let's see, uh, as a typical man, let's read this, uh, this, this pastor was given a comment. I don't always listen to my wife as well as I should. My lack of listening easily communicates disrespect. <laughs> to value and respect each other, we must stay tuned in to each other. Encouraging words, well-timed compliments, thoughtful notes, a simple hug. These are little but meaningful ways to express value and respect. Let's talk about that. Oh, yeah, I got some scripture I want to share. Okay, you want to go ahead? I'll yeah, start with the scriptures. Um, okay. You know, of course, you know, there's plenty of scriptures on, you know, respect and loving each other and so forth. But I, I just thought for the value and the respect part, I'm gonna grab me some water. I wanted to point out too. So in Colossians chapter 3, verse 19, Colossians chapter 3, verse 19, it says, love your wives and never treat them harshly. And I like that word harshly, right? Because I thought it was so important. Um, and then in 1 Peter 3, verse 2, it says, love your husband Encourage him and enjoy him as a blessing from God. Mm. And then Ephesians chapter 5, 33 kind of hits both husband and wives and use the same kind of things, right? But I thought it was pretty good because I like the way Paul just summarized it. After he kept telling them about what they need to do for each other, he comes down in verse number 33 of Ephesians 5 and says, So again, and he repeats himself, mm. I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself mm -hmm. and the wife must respect her husband mm -hmm. and of course you know um it says in other parts of scripture we should respect each other right yes, and, 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 and look at the word respect just to give us an idea do regard for the feelings the wishes the rights of others so when you have you know the, the, the other person in mind then you value their feelings you value you know their happiness you know, you, you want to say encouraging things to them because mm -hmm. you respect them, you value them, right? Mm -hmm. What we value, and part, the Apostle Paul put it this way, you value yourself, you love yourself, you yeah. take good care of yourself, and men are very famous for that, going to the gym religiously, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of our bodies, right? And now, you know, we have, you know, the health thing, so most people want to eat healthy, right? Yeah. That's a good thing going on in our country right now where I think people are really making an effort to take care of their body and what they're putting into it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Bible said just like you do that for each other, for yourselves, do it for your spouse, right? Because you value them, you respect them. When you respect somebody, I always put it to um, our bosses at our, our jobs or teachers in school. We never really, uh, even if we do it, we do, we do, we're not conscious of it because we're conscious of not respecting authority, right? Whether it be a police officer, oh, you no, know, disrespect. disrespect, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, police officer, you know, in, you know, a person in politics, person in school, mm -hmm. a person at your job. Mm -hmm. We're very conscious about that mm -hmm. because we know that those people have authority over us, right? Yeah. And so for that reason, we respect them and we, and we, you know, we're not valuable, but we respect them. Mm -hmm. I think the Bible is saying that we ought to do the same thing for our spouse. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do those people, yeah, if we're going to do that to, for those people that don't even have a really true relationship with us, right? They just happen to be the person that, you know, gives us our paycheck or <laughs> teaches our, you know, school. But I mean, we have a personal relationship with each other. And therefore, we should really go out of our way to respect each other and value each other. Mm -hmm. I think it's important because it's easy to get comfortable and become complacent and you mm -hmm. start to devalue the person or take them mm -hmm. for granted. And so, you know, what it took to win them, sometimes we stop doing, you know, we stop oh, sure. valuing the person. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have to look for ways to say, I value you. Look for ways to make the person feel special. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to take thing, advice from the barbershop, you know, <laughs> because what worked for Susie may not work for oh, Tracy, you know. Oh, oh. So you have to, that's why communication last week, we was talk, as we talked about, that was so important because you got to know, what do I want? You know, what do, what do you want? Th those types of things have to be conveyed. And so let your person 
your wife, your husband know that they are valued, mm. okay? And then also that respect piece is huge. As women, we have to understand that men uh, want to be respected. You know, we want to be loved and, you know, cherished and all those type of things. But they want, and of course, they want to be loved and cherished as well. But I think the number one thing you can agree, respect, respect yeah, me, yeah, yeah. respect me. And, and especially don't disrespect them publicly, mm -hmm. you know, because you, you, you're tapping into that ego. Yeah, that is yeah. how God made them. We want to respect and honor our husbands. And, um, you know, there have been a couple times that I disrespected you. It wasn't intentional, but you had to check me on. It's like, wow. And I couldn't take it back. It was done publicly. I didn't mean it. I was just, you know, really probably trying to be funny or something <laughs> like that. But it hurt your feelings or it made you feel devalued. And so we have to be very, very careful with how we treat our spouses and to make sure that we are listening to them. You know, for me, disrespect is if I'm talking to you and you're looking away, you have the TV on, you're looking at your watch, those types of things, I feel devalued. I feel disrespected, you know, um, th those types of things. And so another thing, you know, especially being in ministry together, uh, in the early years, people just would try to come between us, you know. And um, I remember one time, and it was a terrible time, but you had to basically say, listen, if you disrespect her, you're disrespecting me. If you hurt her, you're hurting me, you know, that type of thing, which to me really shouldn't have, we shouldn't have had to say that. But it's amazing how when people don't value their relationships, they don't value your relationship. Mm, when mm. people don't value marriage, they, they, they're mm. disrespectful to their boss, to people in authority, mm. then they'll continue that even after they get saved. And so a lot of these teachings, I think Dr. Dee Dee said this, and I, and I thought it was a great quote. We are taught the promises of God, but we're not taught the process. Mm. You know, and I thought that was profound. But we can even take that further. That a lot of times we we we're not taught how am I supposed to treat people. Mm. You know, what does respect look like? And um, and that's why I think this lesson, even as we're going through these points, is so important. Lifting it back, taking it back to the marriage piece. Mm. What does respect look like to you, honey? You know, what is respect? Having those conversations at Tracy, I don't like when you talk to me like that. You know, lower your voice. You know, I, I have an issue with raised voices. For whatever reason it for whatever the root of it is and so i shut down whenever the voices are raised i'm shutting down because i don't like a lot of conflict a lot of confrontation and so if it continues i feel devalued i feel disrespected and so that's going to get the wrong kind of reaction so um i think that's again like you were saying earlier knowing your spouse, knowing your spouse. That's, that's important good. anything that's else good. on that honey i want a, a couple of these uh questions on here no, no, no. uh well some lines that you can repeat to show your spouse that you value them, that you respect them is, for example, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate how hard you work around the house. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you are a homemaker and that's what you do every day, you want to be appreciated for keeping things nice and clean. Or when he comes home, the, the meal is prepared, right? Mm -hmm. Or if both of you work and he says, you know what, I picked us some dinner up on the way home so you wouldn't have to prepare anything. I appreciate you. I appreciate you contributing to the household. To, I appreciate you for sticking with the budget. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. I, I realize that your job has been stressful. How can I help? Mm. How can I help? Right? So these are some things that we're trying to help you be practical. We can give you scriptures and everybody knows the scripture, but we, but we don't want to just show you what the promises are. We want to show you how to work this thing out, how to how to walk it out, okay? Mm -hmm. And so using some lines, just something simple, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. How can I help? That can help tremendously. Anything else on that, babe? No, that's good. All right, so we're moving right along. If you're just tuning in, this is Pastor Tracy, Pastor Mark, we're Bundle Life Christian Center Church, guys. We're here every Wednesday, 7:30, trying to help you to not just have a regular life, but to have abundant life because that's the best life. All right, number three, acknowledge. Mm. I commit to acknowledge selfishness. Mm, that's a good one. Selfishness. Wow. <laughs> selfishness is enemy number one to a good marriage. <laughs> a wise counselor said there are two kinds of people in the world. The givers and the takers. A marriage between two givers can be a beautiful thing. Oh. Okay? Friction is the order of the day, however, for a giver and a taker. But two takers can claw each other to pieces within a period of six weeks. In short, selfishness will devastate a marriage every time. Because it's like... I'm all about me. All about me. I've seen that though. Yeah, Isn't that something? Yeah. I'm all about yeah. me. You see it a lot. You oh, want yeah. to say something on that, honey? No, it, 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 it's it's so true. You know, uh, you can't come into a relationship and it's all about you. <clears throat> now, after the Bible says the opposite. It says you ought to be concerned about the other person, right? 
if you take the attitude, remember, think about it. If you take the attitude that I'm going to make sure I take care of her needs. And she said, I'm going to take care of his needs. So you're always looking out for each other's needs. That's, then both of y'all getting your needs taken care of. But if, what if you say, I just want to take care of my needs, and I want to make sure she's taking care of my needs. Well, what about her needs? And vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. It can't be all about you. If, if not, as, 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 as she just mentioned, it's going to destroy a marriage really, really quick. Mm -hmm. Selfishness will really destroy a marriage because, you know, nobody is going to put up with that long term. I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, yeah, you could have a person there and they'll put up with selfishness for a while, but that gets old real fast, mm -hmm. okay? That gets old real fast. I'm always giving, 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 mm -hmm. and I've never received, right? Mm -hmm. That's how relationships end. I remember even back in the dating days, people always say that. If I'm, if the person says, if I'm dating somebody and I'm all I want to do is stuff, I'm taking you out, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and do that, and there's nothing, rest of, uh, whatever that word is, uh, super good about that, that's not going to last. It'll never last. Mm -hmm. And relationship is no different. It's all about... You know, you taking care of each other, you looking out for each other, you making sure you value, respect, mm -hmm. and do for each other mm -hmm. as you expect them to do for you. So That's selfishness selfishness looks like I gotta have my way. It's it's all about me. Mm -hmm. Selfishness looks like demanding uh, mm -hmm. your way. Selfishness looks like you always have to be right. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's amazing. That somebody could um, they're easily threatened by constructive criticism. Mm. Mm -hmm. And if you want a strong marriage, you have to purposely say, you know what, I don't want to be selfish. Mm. I'm committing to acknowledge the times that I have been selfish, right? Mm. Anybody can fall into that where they're being selfish, where they're like, you know, I was only thinking about me, you know. But to be able to bigger person to say, I admit that that was a selfish move, that was a selfish remark, yeah. you know, as opposed to coming together. This is really good because we want to come together and say, I don't want to be selfish. It's not about I, it's about we. we. About we. It's about we. Always. It's about us. Absolutely. All right, guys. I hope you're being blessed by it. We're going to move on to number four uh, so that we can make sure that we cover these. We have five, so we're on number four. Mm -hmm. We will not neglect our physical relationship. Mm -hmm. We will not. So this, <laughs> these are commitments we're making. Okay? All of these things are very important. And number one, I mean, number four, not neglecting our physical relationship. Sex is a part of marriage. Most men would like it to be a bigger part of their marriage. Is that true? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As you get older, you kind of learn to make sure you learn your spouse. And so whatever will, will satisfy your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. So say, for example, I'm just get real practical. If your spouse wants to be able to in, be intimate, you know, twice a week, and you try to, to do that. But what if it's three times a week? Because like, you know, ch that changes in marriages, right? Mm -hmm. And so the reason why I say it depends is that, you know, men used to want to have sex all the time. But sometimes when we think of sex, we don't think of the intimacy part, right? Which is more important to to a woman. Well, let me say let me say this before you get into that because yeah. just overall, the mm -hmm. with our audience, mm -hmm. I would probably say most men would probably want it more than women. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, would you no. agree with that? Yes, there's okay. no doubt about it. Because we know we change, we get part. older, <laughs> oh whatever, and, I, and I'll let you go deeper yeah, in that because I know what part. you're where you're going with that. <laughs> but, but the bottom line is, men and women approach sex differently. Yes, absolutely. okay. Absolutely. We need that that intimacy. We need some, yes. you know, to know you care about us. Right. For men, a lot of them, it's an act. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's an physical, act. Right? Yeah, it's just flat out physical, yeah. uh, let off that steam or whatever. And, and I think we'll probably have a deeper lesson on sex or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But just to kind of hit these points that we're making a commitment to not neglect. Because yeah, the Bible yeah. even talks about that, that you don't deprive Each your other. spouse. You yeah, don't deprive, yeah. you know, except for a mutual agreement. And so yeah. it's important. That's a part of communication. So when you're talking yeah. about, hey, twice a week, three times a week, every day, you know, whatever <laughs> that is. You know what I'm saying? Several times a day. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but it can really be detrimental to a relationship if you're not physical. Right. Um, it's important. I enjoy our time together. And it's amazing. As empty nesters, it's like it's even better. There's less <laughs> inhibitions. And we won't get into that to the next lesson. But um, I think that you never want to make assumptions. You always want to communicate. Okay. Communicate. Yeah. Are we physical enough? You know, yeah. honey, what do you need to, to, to feel special? I've, right. I've seen, well, I've talked to some women where they haven't felt that even they, they'll go through with the act, mm -hmm. but they haven't felt like there was intimacy, which right. is where you were leading to. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to say something no, about I that? I want to point it out because a lot of times, for, me, for my men audience particularly, because I know you address mm -hmm. this from a woman's perspective, you know, as men, we have to learn our spouse 
especially it relates to to intimacy you know having sex because again we kind of go through the physical more so like you know i tell my wife i, I need certain colors on you right because that's important to me because we're i right mm -hmm. we, we have to get excited so we have to get see that first because one time i said if you guys gonna take it off why do i need to put it on because we have to see to get excited right because we're physical and we're eye visual. kind of thing visual i'm sorry mm -hmm. but the, but but for a woman it starts in the morning how you greeted her you know do you call her during the day you tell her a text and all of that leads up to later on. In our mind, eight, nine o'clock, whatever time is, let's go. But for a woman, it doesn't work like that. And so we have to learn that and be able to make sure that we can meet the needs of our spouse. And then we have to understand that they're slow cookers, right? They're crock pot kind of thing. And they want to be able to, some romance, right? Some romance. And for a man, we don't have to necessarily have romance, you know? Mm -hmm. The physical act is good enough for us, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not good enough for a woman, for the most part. I was about to say, there are some women, there's they're some, like a quickie. Yeah, good. So, and, sometimes that's, it. and sometimes that's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but for the most part, right. women <laughs> wants to be romance. Absolutely. And they wants right, to babe. some really you know, intimate you time. Can. I was reading something yeah. that was talking about sex for a woman you know the intimacy part because she could get pregnant mm -hmm. so it's like get pregnant by somebody that doesn't really care about me mm -hmm. you know what i mean <laughs> so at least i know you care about me so it's easier to um be a part of that act mm -hmm. okay as opposed to the guy that hey drop the seed and keep it moving well, which happens so, a lot in our culture right yeah 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 Fortunately. so we have to again what we're talking about tonight we're talking about commitments and one of those commitments is to not neglect that physical relationship when you do it can lead to other problems in the marriage there have been uh, people that have said if they're not getting it at home <laughs> they may get it other places and I think when there's not enough physical um, it opens this other spouse up to emotional um, affairs yeah, yeah. right especially if they work outside of home yeah yeah seen other people exactly yeah, and yeah. so emotional affairs lead to what physical affairs mm -hmm. Right, and so we have to be very careful now as Christians. I'm trusting that Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and help you to um, not succumb to those things. But we also have to be practical that Christians have cheated, right? Very love the Lord, but out there getting it on, okay. And so we want to make sure that we recommit to our spouses and say, if I'm getting it, I'm getting it from you. Come on, right? And and if I'm not getting it enough, I'm gonna let you know so that we can come into agreement. Okay, I want it five times. What can we come into agreement? It's kind of like a compromise. Okay, what well, three do? We can agree on three times a week, right? And um, and those things are something that you have to talk about. And even though we kind of being light about it, we know that there are some marriages where there's no sex happening and it's hurting you and you're bothered by it. And it's like it's been a long time since he's touched you or she doesn't act like she wants you and that bothers you as well so we have to put some prayer on that yeah, yeah. right we have to put some prayer on that you have to take that to the lord there may need to be some counseling there need to be uh some reasons you know maybe some counseling to see what's the reason behind it yeah. there yeah. could be physical reasons medical, right? right some medical reasons mm -hmm. and so if i can't have sex with you or the the, the husband is having some issues or vice versa mm -hmm then what alternatives do we have to make sure that there is some intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. Intimacy doesn't necessarily always have to involve penetration, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to have ways to make sure that your spouse still feels wanted. Because mm -hmm. that's a big part. Yep. Feeling wanted, feeling attractive, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. So we can go deeper on that, but let's move on yeah. to the last one. We I do think have about three minutes left. Oh, wow. Go. Okay. So we we'll hit the last one, one okay? Yeah, we'll hit the last one. The fifth one in this is we will commit to stay close to God. Mm -hmm. Staying close to God. Maybe you talk so much about the triangle, and I know you'll hit it again as we're here, but that's the commitment. Our, our relationships, having a marriage God's way, it's not going to work mm -hmm. if we're not close to God. Come on. He's the one. I used to love when Bishop Hilliard would say that uh, Dr. B would get the benefit of him being in the presence of God, mm -hmm. him being committed to God. If you're committed to God, you know, remember that that's God's daughter or that's God's son. You're going to treat them right because you're committed to God. And so I, I love that. I commit to stay close to God, mm -hmm. which in essence will have me closer to my husband. You want to talk about triangle again, man? Yeah, we were talking about earlier. We'll just kind of close with it. Okay. You know, you know we talked about the triangle with the, the base of the triangle, right? Left mm -hmm. and right. Mm -hmm. The spouse. You're, I'm on here on this side. Mm -hmm. And then the apex is where God is, right? Mm -hmm. And the goal is, as a husband or a wife, you know, makes effort 
to get on purpose closer to, God. to get closer to God. In essence, getting closer to each other. Yeah. And that's so important because as I read the scripture mm-hmm. and I hear what God says about relationship and what God says about how I need to treat my spouse, how I can hinder my prayers and how I need to do love them like Christ loved the church and all those things. Mm-hmm. As I'm reading that, because I'm trying to get closer to God, I'm listening yeah. to his word. Yeah. As I'm praying to him and talking to him yeah. and, he, and he's coming back to me and saying, hey, make sure you're doing all the right things now, right? Because the Holy Spirit is going to do that. Or if I'm doing something wrong and the Holy Spirit brings it to my attention, mm-hmm. hey, fix that. Mm-hmm. Fix this. Mm-hmm. That's that's the whole going towards the triangle because mm-hmm. that's what happened. Because when I'm listening to God, He's gonna correct some stuff. He's gonna fix some stuff. When mm-hmm. she's listening to God, because she's moving closer to Him, yes. He's gonna correct some stuff, yeah. fix some stuff, yeah. and then we all get the benefits of that, right? Mm, I so like I think it. that's the one of the most beautiful illustration we've ever mm-hmm. learned over the years about marriage and the importance of getting closer to God. Amen. The scripture here, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, a rope made up of three cords mm. is hard to break. Mm-hmm. The third cord of a meaningful and lasting relationship is God. As husbands and wives cultivate their relationship with God, they make a strong contribution to their marriages. We were created to live in a personal relationship with God, mm-hmm. and these open ways for this to be possible, John three sixteen, of course. And so again, those three chords. It's hard to divorce. It's hard to fight. All those things if you're doing it God's way. God says, you know, to bear one another's burdens. God says to love uh, love her as Christ loves the church. He's telling us how to do it. You know, show respect for your husband. Mutually submit. So many scriptures that we've covered. And guys, if we are focused on doing it his way, moving closer to him, committing to say, I'm going to stay closer to God, the D word doesn't have to come up. Come on. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to come up because we're committed to each other. So let me give you those top these top five one more time before we uh, move into leading you to the Lord. Number one, we are teammates, not opponents. Mm-hmm. Number two, we will value and respect each other. Number three, we will acknowledge selfishness. Number four, we will not neglect our physical relationship. And number five, we will stay close to God. We need to make those five commitments. Now, next week, we'll get a chance to go into some of the questions um, that we will not have a chance to go into tonight. So you want to make sure you tune in because we have some questions to help you with some deeper reflection as we talk about commitments. When we are committed, because one of the chapters in my book, I talk about take the D word out, take divorce out, uh, take divorce out as an option. Well, these questions that we'll cover on next week will actually help you as you're going deeper. So were you blessed tonight? Don't just be a watcher now. We want to make sure. Let us know in the comments that you are blessed that this was hitting uh, on the head. I would like to know which one of the one, two, three, four, or five blessed you the most. And of course, Pastor had asked you earlier to do some virtual evangelism. Make sure you share this. You know, get the link and share it on your timeline. Um, take the link and send it out in a text blast to some of your family and friends. Guys, we got to make sure that our lives reflect what the Bible says. As believers, we want to look like God would want us to look. And the Bible is our mirror. We want to make sure we make those tweaks and everything so that we can look better. So before we go, um, our thing is not scrolling, but there's a number that you can dial. Okay. Uh, actually text 21,000. Uh, text the word salvation to the number 21,000. If you want to be saved tonight. If you want to be saved, if you want to get closer to God by accepting um, this precious gift that God sent to us through His Son, Jesus. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. If that's you and you want to be saved tonight, we know that Romans 10 and 9 said, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. I don't know about you, but that's one of the best decisions I ever made, being saved. I know I remember my uh, time when I got saved, babe. I know you remember. And guys, we want you to have that same experience that you'll remember when you were saved. You will remember when you gave your life to the Lord. So I'm going to lead you in that. But I also want to pray for the person that is saved, but you backslidden. You haven't been living right. You haven't been going to church. You haven't been plugged into anybody's Bible study or anything. And you want to recommit your life tonight. You're like, you know what? I need to recommit my life to the Lord. Guess what? That'll help you in your relationship. Okay? It'll help tremendously because you're desiring to get closer to God. And then the third appeal, of course, if you need pastors, you need someone that you're being held accountable to. When we keep mentioning counseling, you don't probably have anybody that can counsel you. Well, if you have pastors, we can be your virtual pastors, then, of course, we want to offer that to you as well. That number, again, 
is 21,000. So you would text the word salvation to 21,000 for any of those reasons. So um, we're going to go ahead and pray. Okay, I said it so country. We're going we're gonna to go ahead. But we're going to go ahead and pray <laughs> with you tonight. And I'm just praying that you're making the best decision that you could ever make. And that's to be saved or recommit your life to the Lord. So let's pray. Father. Thank you so much for the persons that are viewing tonight, Lord God. We are lifting them up, Lord God, and asking for those persons, oh God, that are not saved, that do not know you in the pardon of their sins, that the Lord, that they will accept Jesus tonight as their Lord and Savior. They will repent tonight. They will admit that they are a sinner in need of a Savior, Lord God. And so I'm praying for them tonight that they will commit their lives to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for the person that has uh, not been living for you. They are saved, but they are, have, are backslidden. They'll recommit their lives to you. And then we're praying for those that need a church, need a pastor, need someone to uh, connect to, Lord God, and that you would move on their hearts to do that tonight, Father God. And then we're praying for those marriages tonight. Praying for those that need to recommit. These five things that we talked about tonight. That they'll recommit to each other. That they'll fall in love again, Lord God. That they'll be intimate, Lord God. That they'll get closer to you, Lord God. And they'll admit if they've been selfish. That they'll play team and not compete with each other. All these things, oh God. I'm just praying for uh, you to just make, uh, move in their lives. And, and let them realize that they need you. They need you in their relationship. They need you in every aspect of their lives. So we just thank you so much. I feel your spirit right now. I know you're touching someone right now. And Lord, we just thank you in advance for those that are saved. We thank you for those in advance, oh God, that are recommitting their lives to you. We thank you in advance, oh God, for those that are recommitting themselves to their spouse, Lord God. And we pray for those, oh God, that are uh, committing to uh, be under, Lord God, be under um, our leadership, oh God. And so we just thank you, God. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. All right, again, guys, the number is not scrolling, but I just want to, and it'll be in the comments as well, um, but you can text the word salvation to the number 21,000 if you decided to do any of those things uh, that we mentioned. So thank you so, so much for tuning in. We are here every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, ready to minister to you, to pray with you, to touch and agree with you, and we're trusting that you'll be here with us not only this Wednesday, but honey, Sunday, Sunday. at 6 p.m. for... Sunday Wisdom. <laughs> I'm giving you a plug. Sunday Wisdom. He's here every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Sunday Wisdom.